Today's video is about value, and I'm also going to be explaining about the other two properties of color, which are hue and saturation. I'm going to be explaining what value is, how value is different from hue and saturation. I'm going to be explaining why value is so important in art. It doesn't matter what kind of art it is that you like to create. And I'm also going to be providing practical tips or exercises that you can use or do that will help you make better use of value or tone in your art. So to begin, let's talk about what value or tone refers to in art. Whenever you hear these two terms, value or tone, they mean exactly the same thing. And these terms refer to the lightness to darkness scale, if you will, of any given color. Think of every single color that exists as having its own value or tone scale, from the very lightest version of that color to the very darkest version of that color. All of those from the very lightest version to the very darkest version are different values of that same color. Now, the reason why value or tone is so important in art whether you create abstract art or higher levels of realism or anything in between is because playing with value and developing a balance between light areas and darker areas and midtone areas in your pieces is what leads to depth and impact in your work. If all of your values throughout your piece stay within a very limited range, you're only using very light values or you stay within the midtones or you only use very dark values, that is not going to be as impactful and it's not going to have as much depth as when you play with a variety of values. There are many ways that we can create contrast in artwork and one of these ways is through use of value. We develop that sense of contrast and impact and depth in pieces through value, through playing with lighter areas and darker areas. And that applies, as I said, to all kinds of art. Having said that, if you enjoy working on representational figurative artwork that has higher levels of realism, mid to higher levels of realism, I would say, it is incredibly important that you're able to develop that wide range of values from your lightest light areas or your highlights to your wide range of midtones to your darkest darks. Because when we're trying to create higher levels of realism, we are trying to develop that sense of 3D-ness and depth on the page. We're trying to create an optical illusion of a flat two-dimensional surface like a piece of paper or canvas actually having depth and having 3D objects or subjects in it. And in order to create that optical illusion of believable depth and 3Dness on the page and light and shadow effects, we really need to get great at developing that wide range of values. In order to do this, we need to be able to observe where those different value areas are present in whatever it is that we're observing from direct observation or in reference photos. We need to be able to see where lightest areas are, we need to be able to see where midtone areas are and where darkest dark areas are so that we can then make those different value areas or shapes happen in our artwork. If we're not able to see that wide range of values and that good balance between lights and darks and the midtones in that reference photo or whatever it is that we have in front of us in real life, then it's gonna be very difficult for us to make them happen in our drawings or paintings. And this is one of the reasons why it is so important to pick great reference photos, especially when you're just getting started, because otherwise you're gonna be making that process of developing those higher levels of realism as you're drawing or painting way harder for yourself. And I'll be sharing more tips that will help you develop that skill to be able to pinpoint different value areas and make them happen in your artwork later on in this video. A common struggle that I see beginners have, aside from not picking a great reference photo, is they stay within the mid-tone range or the lighter value range, they're afraid of going too dark, or they miss those highlight areas, and then they are confused as to why they're not able to develop that level of 3D-ness that they're looking for, why their artwork is still looking kind of flat, and it's precisely because they're not developing that wide range of values that is needed. And one last thing that I wanna mention in regards to value before moving on to the next part of this video is that I see a lot of beginners get obsessed with getting the right color or hue 
and not getting the right value. I say this in a lot of my tutorials, but value is number one. It's even above. It's more important than color correctness when it comes to developing a believable sensation of depth and realism. And what I mean by this is that your color or your hue can be slightly different from what you're observing in that reference photo or whatever it is that you have in front of you in real life. But as long as you're making those different value shapes or areas throughout the object or the subject happen in your drawing or painting, in a similar way to what you're observing, you're creating those lightest areas where you see them, those midtones where you see them, those darkest darks where you see them. And the relationships between those different value areas and shapes is similar to what you're observing. You're going to be able to create depth and realism. The hue in and of itself can be slightly different. You could be using a warmer green when what you're observing is a cooler green or you could even change the color entirely from what you're seeing. You can turn that blue vase into a purple vase as long as you are keeping those different value areas, those lightest areas, those midtones, those darkest darks that you see throughout that subject and you're making those values happen in your artwork. This is exactly why artists who work only with graphite pencils or in monochromatic color schemes with one single color are able to arrive at higher levels of realism and tons of depth and contrast in their work, even through just working in grayscale or working with one single color. Bringing in a ton of different colors is not necessary in order to arrive at that optical illusion of depth on the page. And even artists who do enjoy using more color in their work sometimes can arrive at super high levels of realism, bringing in three to five colors. All right, so moving on to the next part of this video, where I'll be explaining the difference between the three properties of color, which are hue, value, and saturation. A lot of beginner and even intermediate artists get confused with these, but it's very important that you understand what they are. Hue, value, and saturation are the three properties of color, and we usually learn about these when we start delving into color theory, which is an art fundamental. Even though hue, value, and saturation are related, they are not the same thing. So let's go ahead and start with hue. Hue is another term for color. So these two words or terms can be used interchangeably. Whenever you hear or read the term hue, it simply means color. They mean the same thing. And hue or color is simply the color in and of itself. So red, orange, blue, blue, green, yellow green that is a hue and of course when you start drawing or painting with more professional tools you start learning about these names that have been given to colors such as cadmium yellow alizarin crimson phthalo blue etc those are hues as well it's just the name of the color now what i was explaining before when i was talking about value is that every single color or hue has its own wide range of values from its very darkest version to that wide range of midtones to its lightest version and as you start drawing or painting with color you start learning how to lighten colors and how to darken colors how to create those different color mixtures that you need to develop that wide range of values in your drawings or paintings so that you can create more depth and realism. When we're using watercolor, it's just a matter of adding in more water to make the color lighter or adding in more pigment to make the color darker. However, in many cases, you're only going to be able to get so dark. So you need to bring in another color to darken the color further and really create that sense of depth that you're looking for. Depending on the color that you bring in to darken that initial base color, if you will, you're going to start desaturating it or muting it down. And I'll talk more about what saturation is in just a moment, but that color that you bring in to either lighten or darken your base color can change its level of intensity or purity or saturation, but it's still making it darker or lighter. When you're painting with something like acrylics or oils, oftentimes we bring in something like yellow or white to lighten the color, or you bring in black or a darker brown to darken the color and create that 
wide value range that you need. When we're working with watercolor, we don't need to bring in white at all because the whiteness of the paper stands in place for our highlights and helps us develop those lighter value areas because we use color in a more watered down transparent state in those lighter value areas and this allows more of that brightness of the paper to shine through to help us develop those lighter values. But whatever the case may be, color mixing comes into play when we're trying to create that very wide range of values that we need. Because oftentimes, especially when it comes to lighter colors or hues, we need to bring in a second color to darken it because we're only going to be able to get so dark with just that color. So now that we've talked about value and hue, let's talk about saturation, which you'll often hear referred to as chroma. A color's level of saturation refers to its level of purity and intensity. Highly saturated colors are going to be bright and intense, and colors with a low level of saturation are going to appear muted, a little bit grayish or brownish. A color's level of saturation is different and kind of independent from how light and dark it is, because you could have a muted color that is very light or very dark. And you can have a highly saturated color, very vivid and intense color that is very light and that is very dark. So as you can see, saturation is different from value. Value refers to the lightness to darkness of a color and saturation refers to how vivid and intense and pure the color is. Color straight out of the pan or tube is going to be at its most saturated. And when we start mixing in other colors, it becomes more and more desaturated. Depending on what color we mix into that base color, whether it's an analogous color right next to that base color in the color wheel, or a complementary color, which is opposite to that base color in the color wheel, you're going to desaturate it more or you're going to desaturate it less. I have shared painting tutorials in the past, one where I am shading spheres and other painting tutorials where I shade things like apples and different types of fruits and vegetables, where I am intentionally showing how to shade using analogous colors versus shading using complementary colors versus shading using browns and blacks, etc. And these are all different ways that we can shade things successfully, develop that wide range of values that we need to create that sense of light and shadow and 3D-ness. It's just that depending on whether we bring in an analogous color to create those darker values or a complementary color to create those darker values or a black or a brown or whatever the case may be, you create a different final result that looks more saturated and intense and colorful or that looks kind of more muted. Um, and desaturated, but both are effective ways for shading because both allow you to develop that wide range of values that you need to develop that sense of 3D form and depth. I'll make sure to leave links to those tutorials down below in the text section of this post in case you'd like to go and check them out. Playing with different levels of color saturation or intensity is also a way that you can create great contrast and interest in your artwork. And just like the balance and play that you're trying to create with different value areas that I was talking about before, you also want to create a play and balance between more highly saturated areas in your artwork and more muted areas in your artwork. Because if you were to just use super highly saturated colors all throughout the piece, that is going to be too much for the viewer. And if you just use very muted down colors all throughout your piece, it's probably going to look very flat and dull and it's gonna lack interest. So in order to create that contrast, that interest in your work, you really want to create a play between both saturated and muted colors. But here are the last couple of things that I wanna mention pertaining to color saturation before moving on to the last part of this video. The first thing is that if you're looking for super high levels of realism, it's very important to acknowledge the fact that most colors around us, 99% of the colors around us in real life are desaturated to different degrees. Most colors around us are muted to different degrees. So if you've ever tried to create a watercolor painting, for example, and you managed to develop that wide range of values, you have lighter areas and mid-tones and darker areas throughout your piece, and you're still wondering why the piece looks 
a little bit unnatural and not super realistic, it's probably because you need to learn how to mute those colors down, at least a few of them, with other colors. So this is all to do with color mixing. I have a video in which I explain how to create realistic and interesting greens by bringing in different colors. And I'm gonna make sure to link to it down below so that you can go and check it out if you haven't already. I think that video is really going to help explain this better. And the last thing that I wanted to mention before moving on to the quick tips and exercises that will help you improve your use of value in your work is think of composition. Think of variety and the contrast that you're trying to create. Don't stay within very dark colors or very light colors or very highly saturated colors or muted down colors. It's always a play, a balance that you're trying to create, a contrast, right? If you only stay within very dark colors or very light colors or very muted colors or very highly saturated colors, your artwork is gonna lack interest and depth and impact. And so I want to encourage you to think of balance, to think of how you can play with this amazing and very powerful element of art, which is color, to create impactful and interesting compositions that convey the message that you're looking to convey. All right, so I always like leaving you with practical tips that will help you improve your use of whatever it is that I'm talking about. So here are five quick tips to help you with your use of value, to really move your use of value forward. The first tip is to do studies using black and white or grayscale photos. This will help you improve your ability to discern between different value areas so that you can more effectively make those different value areas happen in your drawings or paintings. Why? Because when you're using full color photos, as I said in the beginning of this video, all of the different colors that you're seeing, those greens, those blues, those reds, whatever the case may be, every single color has its own value scale. Comparing areas that are orange with areas that are blue is going to be difficult because there can be very light blue areas and darker orange areas. And it can just be difficult to understand and relate these different colors with each other and just come to a conclusion as to whether this area over here is lighter or darker than this other area over here because of all of the different color scales involved. Whereas when you're using a black and white photo, all of those different color scales have been merged and synthesized into one single scale, which is grayscale. You only see black areas, a wide range of midtones, and very light white areas. And so develop that skill to create that sense of depth in your drawings or paintings in grayscale, using black and white photos and maybe only using graphite pencils. If you enjoy colored pencils, for example, you can use white, gray, and black. And you can also create monochromatic paintings using one single color. Moving on to tip number two, and this one is squint when you're observing that reference photo or whatever it is that you have in front of you in real life. Close your eyes as much as you can and observe that subject or that object through your eyelashes. That is going to help simplify all of those different value areas into just those major, most prominent value shapes, meaning into those darkest areas, those midtones and those lightest lights, so that you can make them happen in your drawings or paintings. Those smaller value changes will be simplified out so that you're not overwhelmed with them. The next tip is to work on value studies in which you're simplifying all of the values that you're seeing into just three values or five values max. Meaning, instead of having a super wide range of values, you have only lightest areas, midtone areas, and darkest areas, or you have lightest areas, three midtones, and your darkest areas. Another tip is to look for a photo editing software or a photo app on your phone that can help you simplify all of the different values present in an image into different value shapes. So I have Photoshop installed on my computer and I do all of my photo editing via Photoshop. In Photoshop, there is this filter called Cutout. And when I apply this filter to photos, it really helps simplify all of the values present into darker shapes, midtone shapes, and lighter shapes. And in Photoshop, I can move a lever 
toward the left or the right to simplify the value shapes more or to have more value shapes and not simplify as much. And just observing your image in this way can be very, very helpful. It's helped a lot of my students. And I have students that don't have Photoshop, but have found apps that they have on their phones that have filters that are very similar to the cutout filter in Photoshop. And my very last tip that will help you improve your use of value or tone in your art to create more impactful compositions that have depth to them is to always make time to choose the colors that you're going to be using throughout your piece before getting started. Create a little plan or strategy for yourself so that you're not only clear on what specific colors or hues you're going to bring in, but also what colors you're going to be bringing in to lighten those base colors or darken those base colors so that you're able to create more depth and impact in your artwork. Don't get started with a new drawing or painting if you haven't given thought to both hue and value. I have lots of watercolor tutorials and watercolor pencil tutorials in which I explain how I prepare before getting started. And you can certainly check those out if you want to get ideas. But if you just jump in with no plan, no strategy, you haven't thought of hue, you haven't thought of value, it's very likely that you're going to arrive at results that are not as good as they could be. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Enjoy your art practice and talk to you very soon. Bye.